Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. I want to share with you a really powerful word that I pray blesses and ministers life to you in this hour. I want to share with you how we serve the God of the impossible. And if you are in a situation where you're saying, God, what I'm facing is simply too big, too great. It's impossible. Well, you're in a great place because God is the God of the impossible. And I'm going to share insight from Smith Wigglesworth. Oh, I pray that in that name, above all names, the name of Jesus, that this word would so minister life to you, touch you, bring a fresh vision to you that you might know that in the midst of this challenge and storm that you serve the Almighty God, who's more than sufficient, He's El Shaddai. Father, I thank you. Be glorified. Jesus, we just lift you up and give you thanks for who you are and what you've done. Let us come today and receive fully what you have for us. Let us mix it with faith that the word would work and produce in us. Father, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. And Holy Spirit, breathe on the word and let it come forth with life. I thank you, Father. In that name, the name above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Let's go real quickly to Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Jesus said, and looking at them, Jesus said to them, with people, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. We also know that Jesus said that all things are possible for him who believes. Not because the person can do it, but because of God. I'm going to share with you the story of the five loaves and two fishes where you might lay hold of that so often God brings us into something. He calls us to do something and He tests us knowing what He plans to do if we will just by faith dare believe. I love to talk about the secret place. And we build that upon Psalm 91 verse 1, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Oh, first of all, that we get the revelation, He is Most High. Your problem is not. Your situation is not. May every situation, every problem bow and let it understand God is Most High. Number two, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, under the authority, under the provision, under the protection of the Almighty God. El Shaddai, the more than sufficient, He is more than able. He has more resources. If we look at our natural resources, we fall short. But if we look to Him, Smith Wigglesworth said this, Oh, if you would only believe God, what would happen? The greatest things. Some have never tasted of the grace of God, have never tasted of the peace of God. Unbelief robs them of these blessings. God wants to demonstrate and prove in your life His Word. He wants you to experience His peace that you might walk as a living testimony, knowing and knowing, understanding and fully appreciating what Jesus did. I like to think, you know, tomorrow is Resurrection Sunday. And as I meditate on, think about that day that Jesus carried that cross and went all the way and died in my place. That was a place where it looked like Jesus failed. It looked like Jesus came to that place of the impossible. He could not do it. If we were in the crowd that day looking on, we would have said, it's all over, Jesus is defeated. But we could not comprehend because we've been looking from the natural. And if we judge things from the natural, we miss it. Jesus, enduring going through it, and though the natural was saying it's all failing, his promise that he had from the Father was bigger in him, speaking louder than the pain, louder than the circumstances, louder, so that he stood there trusting in the Father that you will not fail. You cannot fail. That promise tested fully, and it won. And as a consequence, Jesus was given the name above all names. Whatever you're facing, whatever the trial is, it has a name. And in having a name, that thing must bow to the name of Jesus, the name above all names. 
Jesus overcame in the place of absolute weakness because in our weakness his strength is perfected and he wants to give you such a testimony and he wants you to so know that his peace works in the midst of the greatest trial when all the pressure and stress is on you his peace stands his peace keeps you and his grace is toward you listen to this if you go to with me to john chapter 6 we're looking at the story of the five loaves and two fishes so in chapter 6 verses 5 through 11 therefore jesus lifting up his eyes and seeing a large crowd coming to him said to philip where are we to buy bread so that we may eat this he said to test him for he knew himself what he was intending to do now just get that underline that part jesus is saying this to test him because in jesus he already knows and a lot of time god brings us to that place and he calls us to do something to make a stand maybe it's for a business maybe it's for your family salvation maybe it's the call maybe it's for a job maybe it's for finances whatever it may be looking at it you now face what seems absolutely impossible and your failure is guaranteed it's not going to work out and the enemy has got <laughs> He's just shouting as loud as he can. The crowd is all there declaring, you're going under. You are going to fail. Your flesh joins in. And there's a chorus of voices declaring, you're going to fail. But there's one voice, his voice, that says, trust me. It goes on. Look at this. Philip answered, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, for everyone to receive a little. My finances are simply not enough to even give the people a little. I don't have it, God. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here with five barley loaves and two fishes. But what are they for these many people? Here is... God, here's the little we've got. And the little is simply not enough. There's 5,000 men. We don't know how many women and children. And we've got five loaves and two fishes. Here, we are not even close, God. Jesus said, have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in that place. So the men sat down and numbered about 5,000. Jesus took the loaves and, having given thanks, he distributed to those who were seated. Likewise, also the fish, as much as they wanted. Now, get a hold here. When God moves, when God answers, it's always more than enough. God is not simply trying to meet the need, but overmeet the need. I love, you know, Smith Wigglesworth often say that God doesn't desire to answer prayer, but to over-answer. He is the God of more than enough. He invites us to come to the table that overflows. We come and because of wrong thinking, see the table as having never enough. And we restrict and hinder God. Listen to this. Oh, I want to go. Let me just share with you another verse. I want to take you to Mark because in Mark, we see a little extra insight of what happened that day. In Mark 6, verse 41. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking towards heaven, he blessed the food, broke the loaves, and he kept giving them to the disciples set before them. And he divided up the fish among them all. Here we see some powerful truths. Jesus doesn't look to the resources. He's not looking at the fish. He's not looking at the bread. He's not looking at the money. He's looking towards the Father. Number two, he's not looking at the people. He's not looking at the need. He's looking at the Father. Number three, he's in a place of giving thanks and worship. 
How many of us in the midst of that trial where the pressure is greatest, we're worshiping, giving thanks? Because when you have that relationship forged in the fire of His presence, in that secret place, that you know, that you know, that you know, you give thanks because you've already seen on the inside. Jesus already knew what He intended to do because He saw it in the heart of the Father. He, he told us that He did what He saw the Father do. He saw it in the secret place, in that intimacy of relationship, what the Father had intended to do. And He's giving thanks because He wants the Father glorified. And he wants the disciples whom he is mentoring and training to understand when you face the impossible, here is how to tap into the God of the impossible. Aren't you grateful that they did? Aren't you grateful for this testimony? Smith said this, They, we, they may believe as we see the almightiness of God and also our privilege not only to enter by faith, but to become partakers of the blessings He wants to give us. I want to share two key ingredients that, that Smith is saying here. Number one, your privilege. When you look at what Jesus did on that day He went to the cross, how He endured the hostility of men, in that place of weakness, He was taking your weakness. He created all these people. He made them. He was the Holy One of Israel. He was the one that the children of Israel would not come into the presence of, but walked in a holy fear. He is the one whose name they would not mention. Yet here they are kicking, punching, beating, stoning, cursing, abusing. He is the God of all, and they did not see it. And they were attacking him, but instead of him responding in kind, which he had the legal right to, he could have any moment said, Father, I'm done, judge them all. But in that process, he is so humbling himself that that perfect love of the Father is flowing out. As they hurt, tortured, treated him so badly, he is loving up standing in the gap saying, I'm taking their weakness. I'm carrying their brokenness. I'm paying the price to bring them in to what you and I desire. Because no man can redeem. No man can meet the need. Because when you face the impossible, flesh is not able. There is no person who can lift you. But He overcame and gave you the privilege and the right through the cross that we would stand, and I love to use the word scarred or marked, and people see that as negative. We've got to get a hold of that God wants you so ever to understand in your heart, in your mind, of His great goodness, that He paid the price for you, that you never doubt it, but there's a humility to it, that you understand what He did for you, that you see who you were. We've got to get that revelation, who we were, how we were disqualified, but through Him, we are qualified, lifted up, not just to come to that place where we just make it, but to the place that we are more than conquerors, brought in as children and given a privilege and right to receive the abundance in Him, to have the overcoming life through Him. Number two, He is the Almighty God. And I've said that how we stand under the shadow of the Almighty. Oh, that we would get the revelation of how big our God is. That He is more than enough resources. He's not restricted to your bank account. He's not restricted to your strength. He's not restricted to your circumstance or symptoms. He is more than enough. And if you will dare in that secret place, press in and possess that promise and say, God, I'm standing on this. I'm trusting you to it. Just as Jesus on the way to the cross, in that place where it looked like he was defeated, it was all over. He said, Father, I'm standing on your promise. I'm holding to your promise. And that promise was tested to the extreme. And that promise won. And that promise overcame. And it, the same will happen for you in the secret place of his presence if you trust that word. It doesn't matter how strong, how bad the situation. The word works. Smith said, because 
they do not hear in faith, it profits them nothing. There is a hearing of faith and a hearing which means nothing more than listening to words. To many people, because all they hear is an inspirational message or a religious load of junk that does not bring forth a living word, that doesn't show you that the word is alive and in the secret place to let it be implanted in you by mixing with faith so that the word grows and increases and brings you to the overflow. That Jesus truly is Lord and that he's living and wants this intimacy, a relationship with you on the earth because of what he did for you. That he wants to lift you. See, religion has so robbed us. It was the spirit of religion that sent Jesus to the cross. All those that boast in how great they were and their authority that would not bow to the real Lord. They had a greater hatred of Jesus because it exposed their corruption than their love for the people. What a sad thought to stand where you hate Jesus more than you love the people and you are meant to be a minister, loving, broken, laying down your life for people. But they couldn't because they were corrupt and Jesus exposed that and he still exposes it today. He wants to expose and show you the truth and bring you into a liberty that you can stand knowing He is Almighty God. His love is almighty. It's more than enough. His strength is greater and He's able to bring you personally into a breakthrough. Smith said this, All the impossibility is with us when we measure God by the limitations of our unbelief. When I look at my circumstances, when I look at my unworthiness, when I look at my bank account, when I look at all the things and I determine that they are louder, greater, have more authority than the mighty God, I am not abiding in that secret place because in that secret place of His presence, I humble myself. I cast off my thoughts and my opinions. I say, God, I know what my flesh is saying, but I trust you. I trust your word. I believe you and let your word speak louder today. And it has to be a today thing. The secret place is where you abide today, now. And I need to be abiding today, now, always. And it has to be in that place that I cast off that spirit of religion that denies the truth. I need to cast off all unbelief, all limitations, all impossibilities. Smith said this, it is impossible to comprehend the love of God as we think in human terms. We must have a revelation from the Spirit of God. His love is a heavenly word. And I've tried in the past to explain. I grew up in Ireland and there are words and terms that are Irish that the Irish people understood. But when I speak it over here in America, it doesn't mean the same. And so we have an opinion of what it means, and it falls short of the true term. They cannot comprehend it. I remember as a kid growing up in Ireland and being asked, what was my favorite meal? I'm a young boy, about seven or eight, and I said, pizza. They didn't know what pizza was. They said, what is pizza? And I tried describing it. You tried to describe it. They said, that sounds horrible terrible and it does until you get the revelation and the holy spirit we see that in john 3 that through the new birth through the ministry of the holy spirit we now can see we can now understand because this word has to be spiritually apprehended you cannot from this brain tissue from the knowledge of man see it that's why through what jesus did and that receiving of that allowing the holy spirit to open the word we enter in and the words which are heavenly like his love. We do not dare interpret it through the human understanding. Oh, it's a holy word. Because God is, how dare we bring that word and so belittle it to a human term. It is what God is. It must be treated with such holiness, reverence, that we dare not touch it. The world loves to say, well, God has love. They have no revelation of that. No understanding of it. But that love, you need to get a revelation in the secret place that you know His love and how He loves you. And what that Lord means. 
and you can hold fast because that becomes the anchor that gives you the right that brings you to the place that you know we know that from first john 4 that we might know the love of god and believe in that love and as a consequence abide in that love god wants to bring you to that place as the holy spirit day after day brings you into the revelation of what that word means means to you smith said i want to impress upon you by the importance of believing what the scripture says and i may have many things to relate about people who dare to believe god until it comes to pass this is a wonderful word in fact all of the word of god is wonderful it's an everlasting word a word of life into the very nature to everyone who lays a hold of it he who believes if you will dare in that secret place allow god to speak it from his heart to yours so that you hear today open the word get a hold and let the spirit of god breathe on it and let him speak to you say i want to hear it i want to speak into my spirit i don't want just my mind's interpretation of what others say speak lord let me get revelation knowledge layer after layer after layer let it get in me smith said this do you think it's possible for anybody anywhere to go looking for jesus without seeing him is it possible to think about jesus without jesus drawing near no because we know the word is very clear that if we draw nigh unto him he'll draw nigh unto you i assure you by the authority of the word if you will get past you if you will get into the secret place he will meet you if you will draw nigh unto him pursue him dare to invest the time and go after him and say god i'm not leaving i'm not quitting till we meet i am seeking your face i face a situation that is too big for me too great i'm not coming seeking your hands your provision but i'm seeking you because you are the almighty god you are the one oh for too long the church is so focused on the hands and just god meet the need god wants more than that God wants to bring you to a place where you're not thinking of Him simply for the need met, but for Him, He is the Almighty One. He is the more than sufficient one. He wants a living now relationship with you today in the midst of your greatest trial and tribulation that you might know, that it might forge in you such a confidence and boldness of faith. I want, oh, sorry, Smith said, do you, th- oh, let me go, sorry getting ahead of myself it is more important than repeating a name it's the nature of the name in you it's more than that it's the divine personality when he becomes all in all then god works through you it's the life it's the power of god god works through the life some people walk in the sons of skiva understanding they know about they've heard somebody talk about the name but they don't have the revelation. They've read books about it and they've heard people talk, but they're not walking in the revelation. In the secret place, God, I know that name. What does it mean? It is simply a repeating of a person's name, Jesus. But it's not the knowing. God, I know you, Jesus. I know what you did. I know what that name means. I understand how that name is above all. I understand that in that name, it's the glorification of who you are, your heart, your character, your faithfulness. It encapsulates essence of everything you are and the victory you won. And that name in me changes me. That name in me causes everything to bow. I believe that God wants the secret place of our heart. And in the most impossible, challenging situation, it exposes the heart. What we really believe in the heart, what we've enthroned, do we make our resources the loudest force? Do we enthrone those? Or do we say, God, you are Lord? Do we forge a a deeper, more intimate relationship with Him and His Word? so that Jesus is enthroned in the secret place of our heart. We are in a late hour, 
and you need to know now more than ever that when you stand and fight your Goliaths, that you have a God by way of covenant through what Jesus did, holding fast that boldness, holding fast that confidence. Smith said this, it isn't, now just hear this, all of the receive this, mm. it is impossible for anything that Jesus says to miss. All his words are spirit and life, which of course is John 6, verse 63. If you will only have faith in him, you will find that every word that God gives is life. You cannot be close contact with him and receive his word in simple faith without feeling the effect of it in your body as well as in your spirit and soul. If you will abide in the secret place, in this place of such intimacy with him, in that abiding where the word speaks, and you have that relationship with the word, the Holy Spirit's opening it, revealing it. Oh, that word gets in. That word begins to grow in you. That's what's happening here. And it cannot miss because God watches over his word to perform it. So the entire whole life, wrap your life around his word. Cling to his word. When you're facing the impossible, get your eyes on him, on his word. Not on your circumstances, not on your resources, not on the need, but on the Word. Clinging, wrapping your life. God, I'm tied to, connected to your Word. I'm trusting your Word. Smith said, the Word of the Lord came not with observation, but with divine. And the woman, sorry, let me get this word correctly. We have to see that when this divine Word comes to us by the power of the Holy Ghost, it is according to the will of God that we speak, not with the wisdom of men, but with divine minds operated by the Word of God, not channels only, but the oracles of God. God wants to bring you to this place now, that in this trial and tribulation, that what comes out of you is not the unbelief confirming the impossibility, but the living Word spoken by the Father in you coming forth with authority that you speak to your storms the word that you speak to the mountains the word when you speak to the lack the word it's in you it's living it's greater it's larger in you smith said faith never looks faith praises god that it's done smith also said faith doesn't look faith jumps faith acts well fear sorry let me get that quote correctly. Fear looks, faith jumps. That was it. Fear looks, faith jumps. Fear looks to this and to that. And it says you can't do it. Faith goes. Faith acts. Faith moves. Because faith trusts in the living God. Even when I am weak, even when it looks like I'm about to fail, I may be down, but I'm not out. Because I'm clinging to trusting in Him. So in the midst of that, don't quit, don't stop. Then more than ever, cling to the word. Even on the cross, Jesus is speaking out, confessing, standing on the word, holding fast the word, doing the word. Smith said this, but Jesus said, be not afraid, only believe. And I want to step back, because I think we need to get the context. Of course, he's talking about the situation of Jairus. Jairus had come to Jesus saying, my daughter is dying, come help. And they go towards the house, but on the way we know the story of the woman with the issue of blood. Jairus could have said, get that lady out of the way, he had the right to. She had no right to be in that crowd. And there was his daughter's life on the line. But he walked in love because faith and love work together. He keeps going. After the woman with the issue of blood who took a lot of Jesus' time, they bring the report, it's too late. And maybe you're at that place where they say, it's too late. Jesus responded to him. And this is what Smith is saying. But Jesus said, be not afraid, only believe. He, when you're in that place where it's all over, there's nothing to fear anymore. There's nothing to fear because what can the enemy do? He's already done it. That's the time to say, God, I choose to only believe. I choose to trust you, God. I'm turning, let's get Jesus bigger. 
We need to hear him speak. That's why you need to get into the secret place so that you hear him speak to you through the word. That word spoken from his lips to you, to your heart, living. He speaks the word just in time. Jesus is never behind time. When the tumult is the worst, the pain, the most severe, the cancer gripping the body, then the word comes. Only believe. When everything seems as though it will fail and it is practically helpless, hopeless, the word of God comes to us. Only believe. And that only belief has to have a now faith, a now hope, a now love, forged in the now relationship and the now word. It has to have that abiding because it has to constantly be hearing, pulling the life from the word. Don't quit feeding your spirit in the midst of the storm. Hebrews 4, verse 16, <clears throat> let us draw near with confidence. I like that word, confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and grace and help in the time of need. Now listen to this, Hebrews 3, verses 6 through 8. But Christ was a faithful as a son over his house, whose house we are, if we hold fast our confidence and boast of our hope firm until the end. Therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoke me, as in the day of trial in the wilderness. When they were in the trial, they saw the situation. They saw the impossibility, and they closed their hearts. It was easy in the day where all was going well, but it's in the day of trial that we need to hear the word and say, I choose the word. I receive the word. That's the day that it makes all the difference. Oh, that in that day of trial, God, I'm clinging to you. In the day of trial, I'm pursuing you. I'm standing on your word. I'm clinging with everything I've got. I'm not leaving. And I say, God, I'm, uh, there's a promise I'm standing on. Give me more. I want more. So I get in the word finding more promises because I want this bigger. I want this to come to the overflow. Father, I meet with you here in the secret place. My eyes on you, giving thanks. Holy Spirit, Share with me precious promises. And I get into the Word and I look and I read them and I write them down and I talk about them to the Lord because I want this thing to get bigger in me. Give me, give me revelation of this promise. Write it on my heart. I want to possess this. Oh, that it will get so much bigger in me. Let me finish with this. Smith said, Jesus gives us His Word to make faith effectual. Whatever you desire, if you can believe in your heart, you begin to say. Whatsoever you dare to say shall be done. He shall have whatsoever he saith after he believes in his heart. Dare to believe God and then dare to speak. For you shall have whatsoever you say if you doubt not. <clears throat> there comes to this place of such confidence that I change my confession. I get my mouth to align with his words and I begin to stand and speak like David to my Goliath, like Jesus to the storm. And I declare that provision like Jesus on the cross. The word says this, when the devil comes challenging, the word says this, and I stand no debate, no discussing, but with a knowledge and a boldness of that living revelation of the Word in me, stronger in me, greater in me, speaking louder in me than what I see. And I'm standing, God, that before the Supreme Court of Heaven, Your Word is forever settled. I forever settle it in my heart. And my mouth confesses what I believe. And I thank You, God, I receive Your promise. My eyes are on You, I just give You thanks casting all my care on you, my eyes looking towards you. Father, you are El Shaddai, the more than sufficient. When Jesus, you paid the price, you brought me in. I want to receive all that you have, that you may be glorified today. Oh, honor to you, Jesus. I humble my heart. I surrender. Father God, let me not be moved by the lusts and desires of my flesh, but in that simplicity and humility to receive what you want, what you desire, my life in line with your perfect will, to be brought into that place, Father God, that I am a witness of your great goodness and your mercy.
Oh, Father, let us truly walk in a humility, humbleness, honoring your word, exalting your word, Jesus, that our lives, we just worship you, honor you. Father, I thank you that you are always more than enough. You are the great high God. We just worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the praise. Father, I thank you for each person listening. Show us, teach us, lead us. Holy Spirit, really move on us this day. And I break every spirit of fear, discouragement, depression off of them, Father, in the name above all names, the name of Jesus. I thank you that we would come to the table, that banquet set before us in the presence of our enemies. Let us come to receive of your abundance. Father God, that Jesus, you may be glorified, honored. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, truly, that we may just glorify you, magnify you as the Almighty God. Thank you for that promise. We receive and stand on your promise, though the earth give way. Our eyes are fixed on you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, in the name above all names, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, I thank you for watching. I pray if this message has blessed you. Would you please like, share, and subscribe? And check out more in the series. And consider becoming a prayer partner. It costs you nothing. Oh, as a prayer partner, you'll receive our email newsletter. Be invited to our Zoom meetings, which we do twice a week. I understand the power of prayer. The power of prayer so that as we're standing to see an impact for Jesus, it takes a people standing before the throne. So the right word comes forth in season, and that word has the impact. I'm grateful for all the backsliders God's bringing back for all the believers that are beginning to live boldly for Jesus. And that's because of prayer partners. And so I thank you for that. It doesn't cost you anything. I believe and I want the ministry to be a testimony that God meets the need and that God will touch the hearts of the right people and that they will give. I do not ask for money. We do not pressurize. We don't play games. So that as a prayer partner, you're not going to be asked. We don't send and, and, and try to manipulate money out of you. Because I said, I trust that God will move on the hearts of the right people. And I'm grateful for the financial partners. May God truly bless, increase, and multiply them. But I understand prayer partners. And I thank you all. I truly pray that this message blesses you, that it comes from my heart. But more importantly, you receive it from His heart. And that it would minister life to you today. That you would lay hold of all He has and dare make a stand. Having done all to stand, knowing who you are in Christ and your rights, and that He is the Almighty God. Amen. Well, thank you for watching. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Remember, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because of, through, and for Him. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.